Hello and welcome to the Knight Rider Podcast. My name is Sean D. Knight and this is a show that will focus on the art of writing, my journey to become an author through independent publishing, and discussions about my current writing project. It is my hope that this podcast will help me to further my writing and that you will join me on this journey as I attempt to write some magic and that this podcast will inspire you to write and publish your own story. So let's go on this journey together. It is July 24th, 2018 at the time of this recording, and I am on my ninth week of working on my current novel, Forget Me Not Father. Unfortunately, it is another week where I didn't meet my word count goal. Real life and other obligations prevented me from spending time writing, and so my novel sits at just 42,000 words, just 2,000 more than last week. I am in the process of trying to make more time to dedicate to writing this week, though it will be difficult. However, while I didn't get a lot of writing done, I was able to post a bonus episode for the Knight Rider podcast. I was invited to be a guest on another Twitch stream called Fan Fiction Contempt Theater 9001, which is hosted by True Sneaky Devil. This is streamed every Tuesday and Friday, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sneaky, along with its two co-hosts, read out loud some of the worst fan fiction they can find and talk about what is wrong with it or get caught up in the technicalities of writing or will sometimes get completely sidetracked. If you're interested in hearing the episode I was on, during which they asked me questions about my own attempts at writing fan fiction, the host was kind enough to give me permission to post it as a bonus episode for the Knight Rider podcast. Of course, it took me five hours to edit the two-hour show and was quite a challenge since there were some issues with balancing the volume and then editing it so the younger listeners could listen to it. It's also one of the reasons why I didn't have as much time to do some writing last week. As you know, I do post another podcast, which is specific to one video game called Ark Survival Evolved, and it's called The Archaeologist Podcast, and that takes up a lot of time as well. For those of you who have listened to the bonus episode, I would love to know what you thought, especially as I tried to muddle through on someone else's show. Moving on, The Guardian recently posted another article about how British publishers are enjoying a record-breaking year while authors continue to see a decline in their median annual income. In episode 7, if you recall, I talked about the news outlet's previous article and how the average earnings for professional writers had dropped by 42% since 2005. For the publishers, there has been no decline. Instead, sales of books passed the £5.7 billion mark in 2017. From last year, book sales income was up 5% according to the annual figures that were released by the Publishers Association. For the UK industry, it was a record year, spearheaded by a 31% rise in hardback book sales income, in addition to a 25% income increase from audiobooks. Fiction and nonfiction also rose by 3% for fiction and 4% for nonfiction. The prevailing reason that many surmise for why professional writers are not making as much as they once were is that publishers are not invested in writers as they once did, especially new writers. Another reason for the discrepancy, according to Joanne Harris, the author of Chocolat, criticized publishers who seem to focus on celebrity and social media stars. Obviously, there are many factors that could contribute to the decline of annual earnings for a full-time writer, but as a writer, you should be cognizant of the fact that publishers only care about looking out for their best interests. It shouldn't be surprising that a publisher will try to spend as little as possible on your work and additional perks such as the rights to audiobooks and other markets. Minimal spending for maximum profit. They don't want to take large losses on uncertain things, and a new writer is very risky, especially since they have to invest beyond giving you an advance to publish your book. Today's writer, from what I can see, needs to take the time to market themselves as well as their books. Develop that social media following, for example, and use it as a point to negotiate a bigger advance. If you have a popular blog that sees plenty of traffic, use that as another way to negotiate a better deal with a publisher by showing them your website's statistics when it comes to web trafficking. And of course, make sure you give as little as possible to the publisher. Don't solve the rights to an audiobook version of your work. Make them pay extra for it or find someone else who would be willing to pay you for that right. Or publish the audiobooks yourself. 
There's a lot more, but this isn't the main topic of this week's episode. So let's move on to the main topic, libraries. Whether you believe it or not, libraries are still one of the greatest tools at the disposal of any writer, especially for the struggling writer when funds are just not there. I know that personally, if it wasn't for my public library, I wouldn't have been able to read the work from authors such as Jim Butcher, author of The Dresden Files. As someone who is unemployed and had to focus on paying the bills, I just wouldn't be able to keep up with the latest literary works if it wasn't for my local library. The most cost-efficient way for a writer to keep abreast of what readers are looking for when it comes to reading is utilizing your local library. But reading physical and digital copies of the latest books isn't the only service that libraries provide. Internet access is another service that libraries tend to provide these days, but they also offer workshops and classes. For example, for the month of July, my local library has Cooking Workshop, a seminar on how people can understand and improve their credit score and become a homeowner. There is a teaching session for Google Drive, another one teaching the basics of Excel, computer basics, a sewing camp, and a lot more. And there are writing groups that tend to meet at libraries, or the vast amount of reference material at hand. Libraries also provide a quiet spot where you can read and concentrate on writing. Being able to meet somebody face-to-face and have them talk about your work and let you know what's wrong with it, very useful tool. Of course, we have Discord and other means to communicate over the internet for writing groups, but it doesn't replace the feel and experience of face-to-face contact with somebody when you're discussing your work. Now, the reason I decided to talk about libraries was sparked by an op-ed published by Forbes that said Amazon should replace libraries to save taxpayers money. There are a lot of problems with this article that I could instantly pick up on. The author couldn't provide any substantial reason for why libraries should no longer exist. This person didn't even know that these establishments were used for other things aside from checking out books, and they didn't provide any numbers on how much it costs taxpayers to keep these libraries open. I won't go into any further details. I will save that for my Patreon page and then for my blog. But there is one more very big reason why new and upcoming writers should utilize their local libraries. Aside from a place to write, research, and access to the internet, you can use your local library to promote your book. A personal friend of mine and self-published author Matthew J. Graken did exactly this for his mystery thriller novels and short stories. He would spend 30 minutes to an hour at the library at each of the local libraries in his area. During that allotted time, Mr. Graken would read a passage from his book, talk about his experience writing, and answer questions from the audience. He would also bring along a number of physical copies that he would sign and sell to people in the audience who were interested in reading his book, and he always sold out of copies to the small audiences that would come to listen to him. He especially did this for his first novel, titled The White Glove, which follows a female protagonist named Janet, who is the head teller at one of the world's largest banks who suddenly found herself in a situation where she would have to solve the murder of someone close to her. I am hoping to have Matthew Graken on as a guest at some point in the near future to talk about his experience self-publishing his books, how he came up with covers on his own, promoting his work in local libraries, and other pertinent questions for a self-published author. But returning to the subject of the library, for the newly self-published authors who want to generate sales and awareness of this book, this is an easy, no-cost way of doing it. Just get in touch with the person in charge of your local library and ask if you can do a book reading or hold a seminar. Chances are that they will sit down with you to figure out when you would be able to do it, and then it is up to you to sell your book to the people who will come and listen. Now, standing in front of people can be daunting for anyone, especially for writers who are introverts. Yet the advantages of seeing how people react to your book and how you present it to them can be a valuable litmus test for how it might do online. At the very least, you will find yourself promoting your work to an audience that might not even be your targeted demographic. A challenge, to say the least. While we have the internet to reach potential buyers from all over the world, there is still your local audience that you can cultivate. For that, the library is one of the best places to do so for the new, struggling writer trying to gain an audience but doesn't have the resources or know-how to create their own website or take the time to create a social media platform. So when was the last time you visited your local library? Perhaps it is time for you to start going there again. Thank you for listening to the Knight Rider Podcast. I hope you have enjoyed this show, and if you would like to learn more about the current project or reach out to me, then you can follow me on Twitter at Knight or on Facebook. 
If you're looking for a community of aspiring writers and enthusiasts, then join the Knight Rider community on Discord. I'll provide links in the description of this podcast. For those who would like to watch my live writing sessions, you can watch me every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash Knight. If you're listening to this on Anchor, please give the episode a clap. And for those listening on iTunes, rate and review this podcast while YouTube viewers like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye, and let's write some magic.